in the construction business there are quite many people quite many players who try to become more um, sustainable but they don't know how to so there's the lack of knowledge and there's also sometimes uh, the lack of uh, data to change um, the processes what has to be changed in the near future and which are the key players for that to improve the situation yeah sure so um Definitely, that I see this as well. There are these key players. Um, you have, say, contractors and clients as well, and designers, and particularly the contractors, um, um, that those that I've worked with, they're very keen to reduce their environmental impacts. And the situation's really complicated. Um, they don't really know how to do this. Um, and also the clients tend to want to do this as well. Um, so the situation is quite confusing. What tends to happen or what you can have in, in, a, in a building, for example, you have some embodied impacts and you have some operational impacts. These operational impacts come a lot from energy use during the operation of a building. Um, and over time, this share of um, impact is reducing as we move to um, renewable energy sources. So these, op these embodied impacts are becoming more and more significant. And this is particularly challenging because it's not, it's not so simple anymore because now you have material substitution and technology substitution and people when they're educated um, in the different disciplines let's say civil engineer for example they may know quite a lot about how to do structural engineering following some codes but they not, may not necessarily know what is inherent in the material which gives its, its properties, uh, key performance properties. So, and somehow we're a bit constrained by, by rule-based standards and there's a bit of a, um, a it, it's more challenging for a practitioner to understand what actually um, gives a material its performance properties. And this constrains, let's say, the client knowing while, or, or the contractor or even the, the material supplier knowing how their material really works. Um, this constrains things quite a lot. Um, so I think that in this area, you know, there's, there's a lack of interdisciplinarity and that's one thing that we really do need. We do need this increase in dis interdisciplinarity so that someone who does the structural engineering also knows a bit about material performance. Um, and then on the other hand, we also need improved um, knowledge of life cycle assessment, I would say, as a tool um, to be able to actually quantify how these substitutions of materials and technologies actually um, makes a difference or not on, on the performance, the environmental performance of, of the building as a whole.